Welcome back, Edgeteers. So here we are today. I've booted up my main system, my Dell 5675, and I was just about to grab my MacBook Pro because what I want to do is a video of 4K rendering wars between my Dell 5675, the Yoga 920, my MacBook Pro 2017, and my Phenom 2 X6 processor running Mint 18. There's just a wee problem, and this is crazy. So when I booted up the Yoga 920, I received this sad, sad message. So it took a little while to boot. That right there is not a big deal. But as we go down here, down, 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 and I do apologize for those who can't read this small text. I actually can't read it without the phone because it's in 4K without any resizing. So this dependency failed for slash home, dependency failed for the local file system, and dependency failed for mark the user starting what does that say pre-process nfs configuration well anyway i get down to here you are in emergency mode after logging in type journal ctl xb to view system logs well here's the thing i was using the system last night pretty much Oh, I would say four or five hours. Um, I was writing a script for a video that I'm going to produce for you. Um, and normally, you know, I don't do scripted videos, but I thought I'd do a really cool one. So all I was doing was writing. Well, here's what I'm really glad about. While I was writing the script, I actually was trying to decide whether I wanted to produce it on the computer or if I wanted to use uh, Google Drive. So I don't know how you guys feel about it, but you know, usually what I like to do is produce my document on the local system and then upload it to Google Drive for storage so that I have a copy, a hard copy on my local system. And then I also have a, a backup on Google Drive. But because I've heard horror stories of people having their accounts shut off basically for no reason which kind of freaks me out you know and I'm thinking I don't want to lose access to my stuff but this time I got lazy and I actually typed it all into Google Drive so I have that document I created thank goodness now of course on the MacBook and on Windows you know I have Google Drive installed the application so I can just go ahead and start creating it there and it automatically uploads every time basically you hit save any changes to the document get uploaded immediately so I know many say hey you can do that in GNOME but it doesn't work really well for me it hasn't worked at all so anyway your mileage may vary anyway <laughs> ah, so this is a real bummer because I wanted to do that video but now I'm gonna have to figure out what the heck happened here I don't really know I mean, I was using the computer as normal. I wasn't even doing anything fancy on it. I was in the web browser, so I can't imagine what caused this. But it's been a while since I've had to deal with this type of problem, so I'm going to have to do some research and see what I can do to fix it. Because I really want to shoot that video on the 4K render wars between the Mac and 1, 2 three Linux systems of varying power running Caden live and I wanted to try iMovie and I was going to try also Final Cut Pro create basically a two minute 4k video make them similar with filters and a couple of dissolves nothing overly complicated we're gonna have to get to that in a minute so I'm gonna do a little research and see what I find out hopefully I can get this working so basically what I'm doing now is powering off the laptop, the Yoga 920, and 
you can see it's kind of sitting there. I'm going to hit escape. It's supposed to be powering off. We have nothing but a little blinking cursor. I don't know how long this will take or if I'm just going to end up hitting the power off. It's definitely what I wasn't planning on recording. Anyway, I also was going to do a video on the Yoga 920 and talk about how much I love this system, and I still do. It's hard to say what we're dealing with here. I mean, it could be a failure of the SSD, which I hope not, because I believe they're soldered on now. I'm holding down the power button now. Okay, so it shut off. I'm going to try to power it back up. This is always my first attempt at recovering a system is just power it up, power it off, and power it back on. And that is the current kernel I'm on. There was an update. I did not do the update. I avoided it. So let's hit enter. So it isn't an update issue because I did not do an update. All right, let's see if we get any errors this time. I did not get any errors this time. What do you guys think? This kind of freaks me out. When I don't get any errors on the second reboot, it's a little concerning. Let's let's log this thing in. Okay, since we're going to make this YouTube official, I'm going to go ahead and start the command line. And I'll make things a little bit larger for you so that you can see, hopefully. All right, so I think I'm going to go one smaller. Hope the that's not too small, but we're going to see a lot of information on the screen. So remember, in the boot up, it told me to use journal CTL XB. Well, what this gives me, in essence, is the last boot up. So you can see here by the time clock, it's actually off by a few hours. I don't know why when I boot between Windows and Linux, the time goes off, but it actually was about 456 but notice though more logs I can look at from as far back as 615 so I'm gonna quit and I'm gonna use the clear command and then man journal CTL and I'm gonna look for those two options and notice that B is not showing up here. Make sure you scroll all the way through the man page because if I keep going down here in alphabetical order, eventually we see dash X, which basically augments the log line so it's easier to read and makes a little bit more sense. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is use dash B. Now, what dash B assumes is that you want to look at the very last boot up which we actually don't want to do we want to look at the previous boot up in order to do that we need to specify a minus one so one would be the first boot found in the journal in chronological order and then two and so on but if i want to go back one, I'm going to have to use a minus one and I can use dash dash boot or I could just do dash B equal ID and I'll probably go ahead and put all of it in so let's do journal CTL dash X dash dash boot ID equals minus one dash dash boot I don't pay attention very well, do I? Anyway, we'll get rid of the ID and we'll press enter. And now we're looking at that first boot up. And if I press the space bar, 
I can jump down and what I'm looking for are some red text. So far everything's fine and you notice with the journal it actually puts every single thing in there. This was an error in the last boot so that's not a concern. This also was an error in the most recent boot and even though it says it can't find the VBox drive modules and all that, uh, VirtualBox works fine. All right, so this message might be an issue. All right, well, I went through pretty much everything here and I do not see anything that freaks me out or makes me worried. I was looking for maybe a hardware failure. The only thing that remotely seems to be a hardware failure is here. All right, so looking at a couple of the messages here, um, the device that it was trying to mount by the looks of it was home. So there was a problem with home in probably the logical volume group. Because if you look down here, we have a root device, which makes sense. So there's a couple of different um, logical partitions inside of uh, the Fedora LVG and I'm guessing that doing the reboot fixed the problem. I don't know if it scanned the journal for the file system which is my suspicion uh, because if it was a really big enough error uh, again, it would have dropped me down into emergency mode and eventually I would have had to done an FSCK more than likely. Now, that's one cool thing I do like, I and mean, then you could do it in Fedora too. You don't have to use logical volume groups, especially if you're just a regular user, which um, they were talking about in here. You know, if you are a regular user, you might want to consider not using uh, an LVG. It makes repairs a little bit easier. Um, if you do have an L LVG, it makes uh, the repair just a slightly more complicated. I don't think I'm gonna worry unless it happens a couple more times. But just to be safe, I think I might do a backup of this system. I think that might be a wise thing to do. All right, as mentioned before, I did decide to go ahead and do the backup of the Yoga 920. What I did was use a portable four terabyte mechanical drive. Now this is a two and a half inch drive and it does have a little bit of extra width here because it of course has additional platters. So what I did was back up the home directory, specifically the user Mark, which is in a directory called Mark. And that particular folder was 11.2 gigabytes. Now I was very surprised to see that the backup only took about 20 seconds. So it was actually very fast, which tells me doing backups is definitely worth it. I took the backup from this drive and copied it to my desktop system's internal four terabyte drive, which again, only took about 15 seconds. It was very, very fast. And I'm thinking of getting one more of these drives and have one as an off-site backup. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. If you really enjoyed it, consider sharing the video. It does help the channel out quite a bit. And as usual, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.